In the previous custom reader video in this series of tutorials, we had an overview of how the analysis is configured, how to load data files, define our experimental design, and finally choose the configuration settings. In this tutorial, we are going to be focused on the data loading and what to do when the application is unable to automatically recognize our qPCR files. StatMiner detects common formats from various platforms, but in some cases our qPCR input files might not be automatically recognized. In this instance, we need to help StatMiner to determine where the information can be found within our data files. To do that, we only need to select the custom mode and open the Customize Import Settings tool. Anyway, before exploring this tool further, let's quickly describe the information and the format required by StatMiner to run an analysis. StatMiner reads text data files, providing they contain a minimum set of information, including sample names, target IDs and the CT values. Each of them should be organized independently by category. Additional information related to well, task, plate or efficiency are optional. Let's go back to the loading tool. As mentioned before, StatMiner automatically recognizes a wide range of platforms. It means that it is able to open data files and retrieve samples, targets, information, etc. as long as we keep the auto mode selected. In case this info is not properly loaded, the application will show us a message at the very beginning of the click and go execution, alerting us to the missing information that it was unable to retrieve automatically. That means that our data doesn't belong to an automatically supported platform, but we still have the opportunity to tell StatMiner how we could find such information within our data files by just selecting the custom mode and directing StatMiner to the missing information. Let's see how this custom import settings tool works. On the top, we can define the separator character in the encoding used in our files. StatMiner will automatically try to determine these settings, but we can change them manually in case we are unable to properly display an overview of the data file on the grid below. This grid is a preview of around first hundred rows of the first file we have provided. Assuming that all our input data files have a similar layout, we only need to configure this file and these settings will automatically be applied to all files when loading our data. Once the header has been skipped, the column names will be highlighted in blue. In case StatMiner is unable to automatically determine where the data block starts, we can select the name row manually. Every row above this will be ignored. Now we can select our information of interest. To do that, each column in the preview has a list box which allows us to determine the information provided by that column. In case the column doesn't play any role in our analysis, we should inform StatMiner to ignore it. StatMiner automatically tries to determine the type of the column and as we can see, detector column has been properly detected. This is not similar to dealing with other mandatory information such as sample IDs and CT values where the custom names are not recognized by the application. In this case, we have to tell StatMiner that this is the column with our sample IDs. The validate button will let us know at any time if we have provided an invalid column or if there is still information pending that needs to be selected. For instance, the CT values column. Now that we have specified our three mandatory columns, namely sample, detector and CTs, our data can be read and we can continue with the analysis. There is, however, still some information in these input files that, although not mandatory, can still be useful for the analysis. For instance, the well position within the plate is not mandatory, but when provided, a virtual representation of the plates will be displayed on the CT quality reports. In these input files, we can also specify the task of the detector, target or reference control, and when they are not provided, all the detectors will be considered targets. Finally, we also have information about the plate column. It has been automatically detected, but when it is not provided, the application considers that every input file is a different plate, with no major implications in the analysis. In this case, we don't have any information about the efficiency of the reaction, so we are ready to load our data. Rest of the information will be ignored in our analysis. It is important to know that those entries with the missing sample or detector name will be automatically ignored. 
We're finished and are going to save these settings into a template that we can use later for future analysis. If we need to load similar data files from this platform, we just have to select this template to retrieve our qPCR data without having to reconfigure everything again using the Customize Import settings. We recommend that you continue your training by watching subsequent tutorials on how to define experimental design prior to configuring your settings for click-and-go analysis in typical Spotfire.